All right, let's let's talk about David Reynolds. Um, so I I was in the middle of my Scott Pye video, and then I just had to talk about David Reynolds. So David David's very emotionally driven. If he isn't happy at a team, he will just leave it. And I think that must have been the situation at Pro Drive when he left at the end of the championship contending 2015, and when he left Erebus at the end of 2020, one year into a 10-year deal, um, and when uh, now he's at Groves and they're saying, oh, he's like, I'm not really sure about that situation at Groves. They've got Matt Payne, they've got their they're very sure about keeping Matt Payne, and he's pretty good. So, they'll be keeping him. Dave is the one that brings home the bacon. That's what he does. He's the highest in the championship out of the two drivers. Um, but the cars just have not been doing the job. And you could say it's because it's Ford, but they weren't the best Ford team. So, if you haven't got that bit sorted, then... What are you doing? No, they do tend to complain the most, I think, uh, about the Ford situation, and I just don't understand what they're trying to achieve by complaining um, to the media. They think they're probably working very closely with, super, with supercars to get that all sold, but mm. I think David Reynolds is still a good driver. I don't think he's the best driver, um, but no, I don't think Brock Feeney is the best driver either. Um, a best driver would be the one who can have a bad day and start at the back of the field and then get his way up into the top 10. Chaz Mostert can do that. I don't know if he's the best driver though. He could be. Um, Cam Waters, not so much. Um... Yeah, David Dave is not the best driver. He's a great. Is he great? Is he better than. Oh, I mean, is he better than Scott Pye? Dave's had pole position and he's had uh, podiums. Driving for a well funded, well resourced team that's been able to deliver things. Uh, like, deliver like a decent car. Last year they were really good, but that's. That's last year. This is this year. Um, and it's not like he's getting beaten by his teammate. He's just... This is that he's just driving what he's got. And it's not great. So... It's hard to, uh, hard to tell. He didn't have it easy for the first few years of his career in the championship. In, uh, was it 2009? He finally got his first uh, main game drive with Walkinshaw. Uh, in the years before, he was in the Walkinshaw fold as a co-driver and with, with Holden teams because that's the way it was back then. Um, he drove. He was. He drove with PWR, but he had a terrible run and the car broke down. And that was in 2007, 2008. He was supposed to be driving um, the. You know, Autobahn car, I think, with Paul D'Umbrell. Um, and then Paul Radisich crashed Rick Kelly's car, so Rick got put in with Paul D'Umbrell. So Dave missed out. Um, and so... That's... Uh, that was the end of that. 2009, he drove the walk and shore car, but he just wasn't quite good enough. You know... Um, so, they didn't keep him for 2010, they put Andrew Thompson in for some reason, God knows why. Um, and in 2010, he was a co-driver to, was it Will Davison? Was he, I think he was in Will Davison's car for 2010. And he didn't, he did a good enough job. Um, they had some sort of issue with the car at some point, but they had a pretty solid race. Um, 2011, he got a seat at Kelly Racing in the Stratco car, and he, he put it, he had a shootout lap at Townsville, where he qualified like 6th or something, or 5th, 
and he was on the soft tires, and they had this whole tire thing going on that year. Um, and then the car broke down, so that was the end of it. But he was making a name for himself. He was fast and furious, and the furious bit didn't help. So he left Kelly Racing. He tried to negotiate out of his contract mid-year. It was a total mess. And he admitted years later he was just being an idiot. And it ended up um, like they were talking, they were talking negative about the team. And um, well, who was his engineer, J uh, James? James Small, they were just talking rubbish about, about the team, about Kelly Racing, and it wasn't very nice, and so Kelly Racing sacked James Small, and they kept Dave for the rest of the year, but uh, things weren't very good at all, and Dave had already signed a deal to replace Paul Dumbrell at FPR if Paul Dumbrell retired, which he did, um, and so 2012, Dave's Fast, he's doing pretty much as well as Paul did in his best year in 2010. And so Dave was, Dave was able to qualify well and raced well, but he wasn't, he wasn't the best FBR guy, but he was still a young driver, so he was getting there. 2013, not so much, about the same. Got his first win in 2013 at the Gold Coast. Um... And I think he finished ninth in the championship again. 2014 was a shocker for FPR if you were any of the uh, third and fourth cars. So Dave Reynolds and Jack Perkins had crap years. And um, I don't think Dave got a podium. Did Dave get a podium? I think he got one podium in 2014, but he finished 15th in the championship. And the cars were just nowhere. Apart from the blue ones, the Pepsi cars, they were the, they were the fast ones. Chaz Mostert and Mike Winterbottom. Um, twenty fifteen, the FGX came out and they were just flying. By the time and then Dave got his a couple rounds in, and then he was flying. And won races, got pole positions, charged for the championship. Um, and. Then this whole pussy wagon thing came out. Oh, he's um just sort of pissed off the media. Things didn't go very well with the team, I guess. They weren't very happy with what he'd been saying. He had a, and he still has it. Um, he's well known for just saying whatever comes into his mind, and um, you know, people love him for it because we don't want to be. We don't want to put a cover over your mouth and stop you saying things. We want you to tell it how you think it. And that hasn't been great for supercars this year because there's been a bit of miscommunication between supercars and the drivers and the personnel saying you can't um, you can't talk badly about Gen 3. Um, so that hasn't been great for Dave, but... Dave, I think Dave's understood it well, and he's, he's happy at Groves. Um, so he got booted out of Pro Drive. He came third in the championship, and then that was the end of it. And then he got picked up by Erebus after Will Davison left because he was too expensive to keep at Erebus. Um, so uh, Dave, Dave got that gig, and he was just he was just happy to be there, and Betty loved him, and he. Got along with everyone, and they were the little team that just managed to scrap it all together for the for their first year with Holden, and got a podium at the end of the year. Came something like sixteenth in the championship or something, and it all started to come together. And then 2017, got a podium at Phillip Island, got the win at Bathurst. Phenomenal. Um, I think there was another podium. Oh, yeah, Newcastle. Had a great year, finished, what, seventh in the championship. 2018, possible title challenge, but 
the car just wasn't able to do it. They built their own cars. Uh, they, they built their first car in 2017. That was his car that year, and they just, you know, just got better and better from there. But 2018, possible title challenge was winning races, pole positions. He won, what, three races? He won one at Albert Park, won one at Darwin, won one at Newcastle because Scott McLaughlin didn't want to push too hard and lose the championship. <laughs> and he was just on for a on for a good year and it just didn't turn into a championship year he fell down to fifth and but still great year 2019 best of the Holdens at the start of the year because Mustangs were the best and the Triple Eight didn't really do very well with the with their car for some reason so Erebus were the best Holden team for a little bit um, could only get podiums, couldn't get wins. And, you know, people were saying, oh, Dave's going to win the championship this year before the season started. It just didn't happen. And that's what happens when you say things that are going to happen before the season starts. So you got to be careful about stuff like that. Um, which is probably why sometimes my predictions are a bit weak when I said, oh, Shane Lincoln's going to win this year. And he's uh, probably not. Um, in 2020, great start to the year at Adelaide. Um, I was there watching him do a shootout lap when the car started smoking. And he kept going and he did the lap, put it on the front row. Probably just some sort of oil overflow or something. And yeah. That was amazing, that was. Uh, but it just... I think the COVID season really affected him. Because he was... Uh, he missed Alistair McVeigh, who had been his engineer since 2016 with Erebus. And it just wasn't working out the way he wanted. And he was falling out of love with it. And so... He was either going to leave, leave the championship or he's going to move teams. And Rick Kelly retired. Then Dave got the seat at uh, what then became Kelly Grove Racing. And the first year wasn't great at Kelly Grove Racing. Um, Andre got the win from pole in the wet at Tail and Bend. And Dave got a podium at Sandown in the wet. Um, but the cars were just so inconsistent and almost always down the back somewhere. They just did not have the pace. And that's just the way it was for that year. And then Andre got got the move to Brad Jones Racing, where he's done very well for himself. And Dave uh, did very well last year when Groves uh, went full beans on the Gen 2 car. And... Hmm. Going home, I guess. Um, and he was, he didn't get a win, but he got a lot of podiums. And he was, where did he finish? Like eighth, finished eighth in the championship because Brody knocked him off at the end at the last round. So, yeah, that was the end of it for him. Um, for, for that, uh, yeah, he did. He got he got knocked off at the end of the year, and. Uh, then he's having this year, and I've already talked about this year. There's not a lot to say. Um, but we know Dave can do it. He just needs to get the right machinery underneath him. And at some stage, he may start to decline, but I don't think it's now. I think Grove, Groves have got to get their shit together, get the get their team, get the car right, and Dave will be up there. Uh, keep Dave happy, that's the pretty much, all you have to do to get a good, good result is build a good car and keep Dave happy. <laughs> and then you get a winning Dave, pretty much. Pole positions and podiums, that's what you get with Dave, if he's happy. Um, but yeah, I don't think, uh, I don't think he's going to get a Team 18, I think it's a bit silly, it's not really an upgrade, it's just a Chevy team, and it's not the best Chevy team, 
Um, it would be very funny if Dave went back to Erebus. <laughs> I think. Imagine if it's like Dave Reynolds 2016 to 2020 and then 2024. I don't know. It'd be funny.